Hi, I'm Evan Melendez, and we're going to talk about using the Lesson Planner for the first time. So this is a uh, basic introduction to using the Lesson Planner and some of the setup preferences. Uh, so if this is the first time that you've ever used the Lesson Planner, uh, when you first log in, you're going to see a screen uh, like this that says that you have no schedule for your user, and it's a whole error message. Um, so I'm not going to panic here. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually click the link here uh, and start to set up my lesson planner the way that I should. And what that link is going to do, it's going to take me to the staff to user screen. Now this screen is a listing of all the staff members that are attached to my login ID. Um, so the login ID is what I use to get into Genesis. Now for the majority of the users, such as myself here, you're only going to have one staff member or teacher listed on this screen. Uh, maybe those of us in a co-teaching uh, using a co-teaching login, we're going to have multiple teachers on this screen. Um, so what I'm going to do to get started is check off myself and click the Save Screen button. Notice this changed into a green color and now that staff member is going to be checked off. I could always undo it by unchecking that and clicking Save again. So a couple things may happen here. So the majority of schools are going to be set up to auto-create lesson books. Now that I identified myself as a staff member, I'm going to have lesson books for Evan Appleton's schedule. Uh, if there's multiple teachers, I would have the lesson books for all those teachers uh, that I identified myself as. Now, if I go to the lesson books tab, I'm going to see some lesson books. And these were auto-generated for me uh, by just checking myself off. You know, the schedule is built in by the admins or the schedule, uh, the scheduler in your school. So there's nothing that I had to do. I didn't really have to pick courses from a list or anything like that. It's the system already knows what courses that I teach, so it pulled it in there for me. There's a couple things that I could do on this screen as far as uh, some options to customize my lesson books. Uh, I could rename the lesson book to whatever I want. In this instance, I actually gave it a shorter name than the Social Study 6 because I want the name to just be short and simple. Uh, this does not rename the course and the schedule in any way. It's just for the lesson book itself. I can give it a color. Now this color uh, gets applied to the calendar screen, uh, which I'll show you in just a moment. The subjects for standards, I could just pick a default set. So when I load up uh, standard for any of the lesson plans in here, it's already set on the 2014 social studies standards. Uh, the rest of this information is really just kind of telling you what course and when the course is taught. Uh, the display is for whether or not I want this particular lesson book to show up on the calendar. All the auto-created uh, lesson books are going to be defaulted to display on there. Uh, a few other things. You have sequence number. I'm going to jump into a little bit more detail later. That's actually used for sorting. Uh, and you can see the number of units and lessons uh, that are within this book. And when you first start out, you're really just going to have one unit and zero lessons at that point. Uh, now, units, just to talk briefly, is one of those things that you don't technically have to use in the lesson planner. Uh, but everybody, uh, every book starts with one unit because the lessons have to go at least into unit one. Um, so what other options are there? Well, I can click the modify button to the right of the lesson book and I can actually configure the lesson book a little bit further than just the options in that screen. So because this lesson book was auto-generated for me, there's a couple of things that are already going to be set up. Is this lesson book tied to one of my courses? So that's auto-generated for me because it came from the actual schedule. It identified what course this lesson book is on the master schedule. Is this lesson book tied to a grade book? Now I can pick any of the grade books that I have currently. Again, depends on your login and what teacher you are in the system, what grade books will be available here. But I can tie my lesson book to a particular teach a uh, particular grade book. Now this is social studies uh, section 17, so I'm just going to pick that one. And normally this is auto. Uh, set for you as well. Default standard set, we could do that on the other screen. Um, and same thing for the subject. So check to make this lesson book private. That is actually if I want this lesson book to be hidden from my lesson pals. Lesson pals is a 
friend and lesson planner that can view and copy my lessons. And I'll go in a little bit more detail on lesson pals in another video. Uh, show lesson book on the calendar screen. That's the same thing as the display checkbox on the other screen. Um, and then lesson plan template. Now this is an important one. Um, what lesson plan templates are available in here is really based on your school and if you use multiple templates. A lot of schools may just use the one and it's going to be called a default lesson plan template and you're automatically going to be set up with that. But there is the ability for schools to have multiple and if you have access to it you'd be able to select another one. Sequence number, again, you could do that on the other screen. Same thing with the background color. You could just do it from here as well. Now department. Department's not a selectable field for any of the lesson books that are already tied to a course because it pulls the department information from the actual schedule. So there's nothing that I had to do. But if I had a lesson book that wasn't tied to a course, I could at least tie it to a department. What grade levels for this lesson book? Well, really what this does is identifies what grade levels I'm teaching in the lesson book, but also when I do search for standards within the lesson plans, those are the default grade levels that are going to be checked off automatically. So it's in your interest to check those off so things are just a little bit faster. Uh, if I click any of these, it'll just jump into the units or lesson screens that I have. But I don't want to go into too much detail into that in this video. All right, so a few other things that I want to do right away when setting up my lesson book. Uh, well, first, let's look at the calendar. Because this calendar screen before was the same screen that we were getting that error on before, saying that we didn't have any uh, lesson books or we didn't have a staff on our user. Now we can actually view the calendar and we can work off of here. So you'll notice that the color of that lesson book on the other screens came over and the name that I gave it, that short name, SS6, is also here as well. So a lot of those preferences I messed with before, they're all for the calendar and just the way, thing, way things look. Uh, you know, give you an overall introduction to this calendar. This is really where you as a teacher are going to spend most of your time while teaching and using the lesson planner to help you teach. Uh, this is known as the Teach To screen or the lesson planner calendar. There's a few things that you could do on here that we haven't gone over just yet. Um, if I go into setup, so lesson planner setup and preferences, there's a whole bunch of other display options that are going to mainly affect the calendar and the way we see things there. Uh, so lesson planner preferences. How many courses would you like to display on your calendar? So this ranges from anywhere uh, from one to six. So let's, uh, let's jump up to six and kind of show you what that looks like. So anything I do on the screen, I want to click Save Preferences After. So I've set it to six, and I go to the calendar, and remember before I had it set to two. So now the screen's a little bit more crowded, and I'm showing up to six per page. Um, one thing to note too is that not all of my courses, because I'm teaching eight total, are going to still be on the screen. I can always click Next, and that'll open up the next grouping of up to six at a time. So you understand that, that the amount of lesson books that I have on here, that's the number we control. And it's at a time. So previous and next, that's all your navigation tools for jumping from lesson uh, books to lesson books from the calendar piece. So this might be a little bit too crowded for people. I know it is for me. So I'm going to actually go back to my preferences and I'm going to keep it at a two because I, I thought that was a little bit neater. So display books that are not attached to a course in the calendar screen. Uh, so yeah, I like to keep that as yes because maybe there's a few lesson books that I have that aren't going to be tied to a course. Um, so what does that mean? Well, we talked about how the default lesson books that were created automatically for me, uh, they're automatically tied to a course. So they're, they're going to show up on the calendar screen. You might have lesson books that you created on the side. And let's just say you have a lesson book that, that's for maybe one of your after school programs and you use it to track uh, the progress of the activities that you've done in there. Now there's no, there may be no class to tie that after school activity lesson book to. So you still want it to show up in the calendar because maybe you, you just like to have it on there and you like teaching from the lesson book screen. It's just a nice reminder. So you set that to yes and they'll show up on the calendar. That actually goes for your lesson pals books that aren't tied to courses either. You can view your lesson pals uh, books from the calendar screen as well. Again, we'll go into the lesson pals in another video in more detail. So print font size, all that's going to do is really increase the uh, font size of everything on the calendar screen. 
Uh, for those of you that are a little bit harder of seeing, um, we go from large, larger, and largest. They're all large sizes, <laughs> and, and we named them that on purpose. Um, the other thing that you could do is order less than books buy. So normally they're ordered by period, which may make sense in a middle school or a high school that actually follows a real bell schedule. Um, but for elementary schools that are using homeroom scheduling, they might like this sequencing a little bit better. And you don't have to just be in an elementary school to use the sequencing better, but when I set that to sequence, let me click save real quick, when I go to my list of books again, uh, now everything's ordered by the sequence number, and, and you can see it's in ascending order, so 10 before 20, 20 before 30, et cetera, et cetera. Before it was ordered completely by the periods, and you can see now the periods are a little bit out of whack. But really what that sequence order lets me do is put them in any order that I want. Maybe I don't like the way that the period order gives them. Maybe I want to do an alphabetical. However you want to do it, you just punch in the sequence number and you can move things around. Let's go back to the preferences. Uh, let's go over a few other things. So fit row height to screen size. So really you want to leave that checked. Uh, what that's going to do is make you uh, avoid having to scroll left to right when you're on that calendar screen. It's going to try to adjust the way the calendar looks to fit the resolution of your computer monitor. So you want to leave that on. Um, you can default new lesson plans to shareable. So uh, when you're using lesson pals, uh, whenever you create a lesson, it's defaulted to shareable so your lesson pals can see it. If you want a little bit more control of maybe you want to pick and choose every single lesson plan that is shareable, you can uncheck that so that way that box is blank on your lesson plan plans. So that's a really nice feature if you really don't want your lesson pal to see everything. I usually recommend leaving it as defaulted because in most of those lesson pal relationships, you want everything to be viewable by the people that you're working with. Uh, show standards on the weekly lesson plan report. Uh, if I go to the calendar, there's a few other screens too that you can do this from, but uh, there's a printer icon in the top right hand corner. And when I click that, um, if I had lessons, it's going to show me a weekly summary of all the information on my lesson plans. If I have standards attached in there, it'll give me the standards on that weekly summary. So usually, yeah, you want to leave that defaulted as checked as well, so that way you get a little bit more information on the weekly printable uh, lesson plan report. <clears throat> so valid meeting days for course. Now, this may not actually do anything for a lot of us here, but uh, all days of course meets and only days for your link teacher. So what exactly does that mean? So for a course that is taught maybe uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, it, every day the course is going to show up on your calendar. But maybe for a course that you only teach it Monday and Wednesday and another teaches it, another teacher teaches it Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, you may want to use this option. So what that's going to do is it's going to change the way it looks on the calendar where it will blank out the days that I do not teach the course. So it's a course that I'm co-teaching with somebody else. They teach on certain days, I teach on other days. We don't teach it together and I don't teach it every day of the week. So it knows based on the scheduling information that my admin put in which days to blank out. So if I will only taught if I only taught language arts literacy six on Mondays and Wednesdays, and Mr. Jones taught it Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday would be blanked out for me if I used the second option of uh, only show days for your link teacher. All days of course meets if that course technically meets Monday through Friday, so all days will be open up there. It's really a all preferences for you and how you want your calendar and how you want your books to look. There's technically no right or wrong answer to the way that you do any of that. You know, I do have a couple of recommendations for how you keep things, but how you set up your lesson planner preferences and your lesson book preferences and just the overall calendar is completely up to you. So just to review, when you first logged into the lesson planner calendar, you had to tie your staff to a user. So if I go into setup, staff to user, that's where all the users that I want to map myself to are. After that, I may want to go in and customize some of the settings for my 
lesson books themselves. Lastly, I want to go into setup preferences and edit the lesson planner preferences overall. So those were the first steps that I want to take when I'm brand new to my lesson planner, getting everything set up. Uh, in the next sets of videos, we're going to go over how to create lesson plans and use and get down into more of the details of a few.